Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Becca and today I have the mid-year book free coat tag. So this is my third year at this particular rodeo. The mid-year book free coat tag was the first video that I have posted on my channel back sometime in July 2017. So it is coming up to my two year booktube anniversary. I don't actually know when it is. I don't usually celebrate it, but I guess you could say that doing this tag every year is kind of celebrating it because I do always do it in July. So if you are unfamiliar with the mid-year book free coat tag, the original creator of this tag is Chammy. I think her channel is now called Is That Chammy, but I will put a link to her original video or at least her channel in the description box. I was tagged to do this by both Cody and Gavin. Cody tagged me unofficially, messaged me, said she wanted to see this video and tagged me to do it and Gav tagged me in his mid-year book free cut tag so I'll put a link to both of their versions of this video in the description box as well. So this is a tag that just asks you a few questions about the books that you've read in the first half of the year. There are 13 questions, it has been a while since I've done a tag but we're just gonna get into it. So the first question is what is the best book that you have read so far in 2019? I have a few for this, I was gonna give you my top two but now thinking about it I want to do my top four. I think my absolute favourite of the year so far is Orange Volume 1 by Ichigo. Zakano. This is the first half of the Orange Manga series. There is a second complete collection and then another volume that just has a couple of short stories, I think. And this is about a girl who receives a letter from her future self saying that if she does not change a few things, then a boy who has just transferred to her class won't be around 10 years in the future. This had me really deep in my feels and I absolutely adored it and I just can't wait to get to volume two. Then we have The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. This is a very character-driven sci-fi. It really focuses on the lives of the crew aboard this tunneling ship. One of the things that I love about this is that Becky Chambers really knows how to write characters and how to make you feel connected to them and there is a whole ton of diversity in here but it doesn't feel like you're being bashed over the head by it. It feels very seamless and natural and I love that about this one. Then we have Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is the first book in the Ark of a Scythe series that follows two apprentice scythes in a world where humanity has conquered death and the only way that you can die is if a scythe gleans you. Absolutely love this. This was a little bit different for me because normally I like really character heavy books. This is definitely more plot driven but I just found the world absolutely fascinating and could not read this fast enough. And lastly we have You by Caroline Kepnes. This is an adult thriller that puts you in the mind of Joe who works in a bookstore. One day a girl comes in and he quickly becomes infatuated with her and begins to stalk her. The thing that I particularly liked about this one is that you are in the head of a stalker but you are rooting for him because his heart seems to be in the right place but his methods are way crazy and it's just really interesting how Caroline Kepnes can make you feel for the person who is in the wrong here by placing you inside his head. Question number two is what is the best sequel you have read so far in 2019 and as you guys probably know I am a big series reader so I have read a ton of sequels this year. One of my favourites I do not own, I borrowed it from the library, I do need to buy the first two books in this series so I have them all but that was Kinslayer by Jay Kristoff. This is the second book in Jay Kristoff's first trilogy and it follows a girl who is sent along with her father to capture this mythical creature for the Shogun. In this world there is a lot of pollution and a lot of animals are extinct so they are essentially sent on this fool's errand to find a creature that probably doesn't exist because it was mythical to start off with and with all of the pollution it is probably extinct but they can't say no because if they do the Shogun will kill them. The second book in this series really ramped up the stakes. A good sequel for me will really push the stakes up there and I, I adore J. Kristoff and I adored this instalment. I still need to read the last book and it's killing me but I will get there eventually. I do have another one but this one I can't say for sure like I'm pretty sure but that would be Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. I have read the first half of this. The UK editions are split into two and I am currently about 250 pages so almost halfway through the second installment and like I said I really like it when sequels ramp up the stakes and this 100% does that. I still have two full books left to go after Storm of Swords in this series but I'm pretty sure this is going to be the best one because all of the shit goes down in here and even though I have seen the TV show and I know all of the big plot points it still got me. Like the thing that I consider to be the biggest thing that happens in here, the chapters that were leading up to that I was on edge even though I knew that it wasn't going to end up great. So props to George Rama and Storm of Swords is amazing. Question number three is what is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to? Now you guys will probably know about me that I thrift a lot of my books and I only really buy new books if I am either already reading the series so I'm waiting for that new book or if it is by an author that I know that I love. If not I'll try and get it from my library or I'll just wait till I find it second hand or wait for reviews from people I trust. But I do have a few new releases that I have either purchased or been gifted that I have not read yet and I really want to. So the first one of those is Descendant of the Crane by Joan He and in the same vein as that we have The Girl King by Mimi Yu. Now I 
bought this one for myself back in January and Cody bought me this one for my birthday. I really love my East Asian fantasy. So these were two new releases that I really wanted to get my hands on. I do really want to read them. I haven't heard much about this. I saw a little bit about it on Bookstagram around the time that it was released. But since then, I have heard nothing and I don't think I've seen anybody reading it on Booktube. This one was really popular in May. I think it was the group book for a popular book club and the Asian readathon was also going on. So these are two that I'm very excited to get to and that I think I'm going to love because I do love East Asian fantasy. And then I do also have The Devouring Grey by Christine Lynn Herman. This is supposed to be a mix of The Raven Boys, Stranger Things and Riverdale, which to be fair, I am about that. So I'm expecting this to be very atmospheric, especially since I've recently read a book called The Furies by Katie Lowe, which had like a very sinister atmosphere. And I'm all about the atmospheric, almost thrillers, like fantasy type thrillers at the moment. So I really do think that I will enjoy this one and I'm hoping I can get to this one soon, but I may save it just a couple of months until we get to the fall, because I think it would be a good autumn read. Number four is my most anticipated release for the second half of the year and like I said I don't buy a whole lot of new releases but one that I'm actually going to end up with two copies of is Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff. The Demon Knight series is one of my favourite series ever. Jay Kristoff one of my favourite authors ever. I know this is going to rip my heart out because in the prologue of Nevernight, you know that, that things aren't going to turn out great. So I'm excited to see how it all goes down, but I'm, I'm scared for my babies. But that is the main one that I'm anticipating. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. There are things that I'm going to keep an eye on that I'm interested in, but I'm not going to be buying until a few more reviews have come out. One is, I think it's called The Merciful Crow and Gideon the Ninth as well. I tried to add that to my Amazon wishlist today and it's not not on the UK Amazon, so I'm worried about that. There's also Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Actually, I have pre-ordered that one. I pre-ordered the Waterstones edition. And aside from those, I don't think there's all that much because Sarah J Mass doesn't have a book out in the second half of the year apart from the World of Throne of Glass but that's more like an encyclopedia type thing I think. And Lainey Taylor doesn't have a book out either so those are the authors that I'm looking out for and we will be getting nothing from them. Question number five is what has been your most disappointing read of 2019 so far and for that one I'm going to have to go with Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I did give this three stars and there were a lot of things that I enjoyed about it. There are definitely books that I've read that did disappoint me that I've rated lower than this but this is the one that I was expecting to like the most and disappointed me. So this is a Eastern European slash Russian inspired fantasy which is supposed to be like if Alina and the Darkling were the main romance in the Grisha series and I was expecting a lot of grey morality in this and I was expecting it to be a lot darker than it turned out to be. There are definitely things I liked about it. I did like the romance and I do like the plot. I just don't think that this book was very developed. A lot of things happened and we didn't see the in-between stages of how characters got to the point where they're making the decisions that they're making and I feel like there definitely could have been a lot more world building in here like how some of the countries ended up as they did and because of that I was very disappointed about this. Like I said there's a lot of things I still Still enjoyed about it but I thought this was going to be at least a four star read possibly a five star read because blood magic darkling alina romance and gray morality and it just fell a little bit flat on those fronts question number six is what has been your biggest surprise of the year so far and orange would definitely fit for this because I didn't think a manga would be able to make me feel as much as this makes me feel but I'm not going with this one I'm actually going to go with the furies by Katie Lowe I briefly mentioned it earlier this is an art copy so the finished copy does not look quite like this but this is an atmospheric dark academia type book which is part murder mystery and part the craft but British. I absolutely loved the writing. I like how Katie Lowe twisted things so you weren't sure who to trust and I also absolutely loved the secret society in this and the friendship group. I liked the friendship group as you would like them in a story. I don't necessarily think they're good people and I'm not attached to them in that way but I enjoyed following them and yeah this was just great. I picked this up at a charity shop because it was an arc. That was literally the only reason. If I see an arc in a secondhand shop and it is new release, I do tend to pick it up. So I picked this up, thought I would read it, give it three stars and haul it, but it's actually one of my favourite reads of the year. Question number seven is who is your new favourite author, either debut or new to you? I have two for this as well and they are books that we've seen before. The first one is Katie Lowe because for a debut novel this was absolutely fantastic. This is the standard of debut novel we should be getting, so I will definitely be picking up anything that she chooses to publish in the future. And then also Becky Chambers because I absolutely love her writing and the way that she writes characters. I think that she's releasing a book either late this year or early next year but I will definitely be getting my hands on it as soon as possible because I absolutely adored all three books in this series. Question number eight is your newest fictional crush and I don't think I really have one at the minute but one character that I really like, it is a male character who is particularly badass, is 
Uni or Oni from Children of the Whales. It's this guy on the cover. This story follows an archivist on the Mud Whale and the Mud Whale is this island that floats along on the Sea of Sand. There are a very select few people who live on the Mud Whale who actually know why they are there, what their purpose is, but they keep that from the rest of the population and everybody else has no idea why they are on this floating island and not in the rest of civilization. They want to know their purpose. Oni is part of a group that are always getting into trouble. He wants to leave the Mud Whale. He wants to go and find the rest of civilization because he finds it really boring, he doesn't understand the point of his existence in this tiny miserable place and because of that he's always causing trouble and he keeps getting put in the belly which is kind of like a prison where people are put just for like a cool down period. But as the stakes get higher and higher in this series, Oni just keeps like showing up, kicking ass and then like skulking off. He's definitely like a dark brooding type character and that is what I like. Question number nine is who is your new favourite character and my new favourite character is Sua from Orange. He is just the sweetest cinnamon roll and the sweetest bean. Like the self-sacrifice of that guy. He is just the most selfless person in any book ever and I just adore him. Now question 10 is a book that made you happy and question 11 is a book that made you cry. Nothing has made me cry this year. I don't often cry at books and because I tend to read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy they don't necessarily make me happy. I'm more in it for an interesting story and to be fair the more high stakes and the more people die the better. So I'm going to answer both of these questions with Orange again because this is the book this year that has made me the most emotional. Obviously there is a very sad undercurrent to this entire story because it is about a girl who is trying to save her friend but the friendship group in this is absolutely goals. I would die for their friendship. I would die for any one of the characters in this friendship group. There's also a slight romance plotline in here and also the most perfect love triangle ever. So essentially when I was reading this I just felt absolutely everything. Happiness, sadness, cuteness. It was, it was just an emotional overload. <laughs> Question number 12 is what is the most beautiful book you have bought or received this year and I am obviously going to go with Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Gavin has been sending me these. I do have Storm of Swords, Clash of Kings and Game of Thrones now. I had to think about that for a second. So these editions come in a sleeve and they have the map of Westeros on the front and the back as well as illustrated end pages and they also have gold edges. So these are definitely some of my most prized possessions right now. So thank you very much Gavin for kindly gifting these to me. And then the final question is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Now there are quite a few. That is the Nevernight series. I am rereading that. However, I do have Nevernight on my July TBR. So that's kind of in progress. So the books that I have chosen to use for this question is the last three. I only have Deathly Hallows and the Half-Blood Prince here because there's a stack of books in front of Order of the Phoenix. But I need to read the last three books in the Harry Potter series. I started rereading this at the beginning of the year and then I just got kind of carried away with my TBR. What I have realised is that as I'm using Bookopoly to pick my TBR, there are no spaces for middle grade fantasy on there because while the rest of the genres are just vague, so it's like a sci-fi or a contemporary, the fantasy sections are split into adult or young adult. So I don't have an option for middle grade fantasy, which means the only way that I can get these into my Bookopoly TBR is if I land on read a book set in a fantasy world, which is why you haven't been seeing them on my Bookopoly TBR, because they are incredibly hard for me to get on there. But I would like to finish up this series by the end of the year. I started off not really enjoying my reread a whole ton. I didn't love Philosopher's Stone or Chamber of the Secrets, but I did really love The Prisoner of Azkaban and The Goblet of Fire. So I am very excited to continue because I'm one of the people who likes the Harry Potter series more the darker that it gets. I think Goblet of Fire is my favourite book but I think the last two books are also runners up and I can't actually remember all that much about the Order of the Phoenix so I'm not sure where that one's gonna fall but I know a lot of you guys don't like it. I don't know why. So that is it for my mid-year book free cut tag. I'm not going to tag anybody because quite a lot of people have already done this by now. It is more popular in June I feel than July but I always do my mid-year stuff in July when the first half of the year is like actually finished. Please let me know down in the comments what your most anticipated release for the second half of the year is because I clearly need a little bit more inspiration in that area as I don't follow new releases all that much. Oh, The Toll, the last book in the Ark of a Scythe series. I'm just gonna, just gonna add that in here. But that's another one that I'm anticipating. So please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to. If you head into my description box, you'll find links to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my Bookish Body Butter and Candle website, the Instagram for that, and 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye! Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate.
You say you're a go when nobody knows With guns sitting under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no